No backpacks because no I don't want the zippers. In the fish bowl. No, no backpacks, no food, no open just, containers. Just the fish. Just the fish. Yeah. Just the fish and their food. No, no food. No, no food, food in there either? No, just brain food. God. You can sneak in little things like that. Oh, today. yes, absolutely. This is the big thing. Gotcha. Jumbo. Are we in? We're good. I'm trying to think what I was going to say. <laughs> that, looked, that introduction worked out here. We're really okay. good at this. Yeah, pros. What's up, everyone? I have a special guest today. This is Shami Benjamin. Hey guys. Shami is my classmate in the first year of the four year MD program at PUMS. She's also a vlogger. She's got her own YouTube channel, and I'll link it in the description below. I'm gonna have Shami introduce herself, but if you don't know her already, Shami is a beast in the gym. And unless you're a semi pro powerlifter, Shami can probably bench press more than you. <laughs> I'm um, Shami Benjamin. I'm here from Arizona, from the United States, uh, studying medicine here in Poland, and we are classmates. Um, I think you're going to be asking me quite a bit about my background, so maybe I'll save some of it for the interview itself. Shami today is going to share with us her experience as a career changer, a non-traditional medical student, and talk about some of her experiences here in the first year of the four-year MD program in Poland. We're also eating popcorn, so just don't mind us. Popcorn and coffee. Ooh, because we still have studying after this, because that's our lives now. So first question, um, tell us about your first career and why you decided to leave that career to come to medical school. Okay, fair enough. Um, so during college, because I worked all throughout college um, and then obviously after graduation from undergraduate through my graduate degree and then until I left to come here, um, I worked a ton of different jobs, so we're talking like from being an assistant manager at Cinnabon and managing a smoothie place to working at a jewelry store to being a sales rep for companies that do like off-road vehicle air filters and oil and um, I mean like you name it, uh, garden products for Home Depot and Lowe's if you're in the States you know what I'm talking about, otherwise just home improvement stores. Um, I worked as a personal trainer for about nine months at a restaurant for some time. I worked for Apple for a year, you name it. Uh, but I think probably the most notable careers that I had that are gonna relate, I think, to what we're talking about today are one, working as a personal trainer for a bit uh, with clients one-on-one -on -one and trying to help them improve their life in some way, shape, or form. Um, and then also, I, I actually stumbled into a career I never planned on being in um, as a senior physician recruiter for a company called Dignity Health out in the West Coast in Arizona. Um, Dignity Health is part of Common Spirit Health now, um, and they are a not-for-profit healthcare organization, and I worked as a senior physician recruiter for Arizona, and so anyone who is employed by Dignity Health Medical Group would essentially be processed through me in our office. Um, and that would be multi-specialty, so we were a quaternary center, so we had anything from uh, primary care to oncology and everything in between and um, that was probably the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, I was there for a total of four years before making the transition here and um, I mean we basically did anything you could ever think of like in the roles that I served while I was there for those four years we did everything from recruitment of attending physicians to resident retention of like trying to keep our own trained residents uh, within the system we did events, we did project management, uh, I helped them launch a website, it, it, you name it, and I probably had my hands in it at some point in time, but it was amazing. I got to work with incredible physicians, um, really, really amazing administrators, uh, and just make an impact almost every day of my life. So That sounds cool. really cool. So I'm curious, you had this very rich experience in healthcare already, working as a recruiter, mm -hmm. so what is it that made you leave that position to come back to medical school? Oh boy. Okay, so um, how do I answer this as succinctly as possible? I realistically, um, I never thought I could be a physician. When my friends were studying for the MCAT in undergrad, uh, I just looked at them and was like, wow, that's really cool. They're going to be awesome doctors one day. But like, my parents aren't physicians and I didn't know any physicians personally before I started working at Dignity. And so um, I think when I got there, the biggest adjustment for me was during that first year or two, I was like, okay, wait a minute. These are normal people that just really care about what they're doing and put the work in and got out and they're trying to help their patients and that's it. Like they're not superheroes. I mean, they're amazing, but like they're just like me, right? 
And I think being on the side of administration and seeing the battles that physicians have to face and also administrators have to face and like the conflicts that take place and the lack of communication and just some stuff that just happens organically uh, from the outside looking in is really frustrating because everybody has really good intentions and you see stuff and you know that there's simple solutions and you want to get involved but you're not qualified to get involved in the way that you want to. And so um, I think it was really inspirational for me to see incredible physicians, incredible administrators with really, really big ideas, but need, they really just, they needed more manpower to accomplish what they wanted. And I was like, well, why not me? And so, um, I don't know. I just, it, it started off with little thoughts and daydreams. And then one day I realized, you know, if I, if there's any time that I was going to do this, it needed to be now. And that was it. So bought some MCAT study materials, started studying scheduled my exam and applied and I didn't really think about it. I was just doing it while I was working and I figured if it doesn't work out, I'm in a really fulfilling career where I'm making a huge impact. And if it does work out, I'm making a different impact in a, like probably on a smaller scale, I guess, from a patient to physician standpoint. But I think an impact that's not really something you can compare it to. So does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. What's that? Very cool. Um, I have a follow up question to this. Sure. So you've told us what you did and what led you to change mm -hmm. your career path. So are there any skills you think that your first career will, or that your first career has given you that you could take into medicine and oh. will help you to become a better physician? That's a great question. And absolutely. So um, as a recruiter in general, I'm going to throw this out there for anybody. You don't even have to be in the medical career to do this. That's a bug. I'm not going to kill it. We're just going to let it live. Your lucky people are watching. Smells of popcorn. <laughs> Probably. So uh, what I always recommend, especially if you have a career change like this, and whether it's into medicine, out of medicine, whatever different fields, go back to your irrelevant work experience that you think is still substantial. And I would say cut out anything that doesn't relate to the job that you're doing. But what you should always be able to do is look back at your jobs, right? Like I said, I worked for Apple, Kellogg Garden Products, Capri Jewelers, Cafe Monarch, uh, second most romantic restaurant in the U.S. Hey, holla. Shout out to them. Uh, but like, yeah, second. Not first yet, but they'll get there. So what is the most romantic restaurant? I actually don't know. I just saw the right thing for them. I'm, I'm selfish, so I just looked at what was related to my friends, but that's okay. So, Anyways. Olive Garden. You... Olive Garden. <laughs> if they went number one, I would Burger be upset. King. No. Probably not. But like, I, realistically, just a hodgepodge of opportunities, right? And I'm absolutely blessed to go through all of them, but there's something I learned from each of them. So working at Apple, one of the biggest things you learn is how to communicate really, really clearly and concisely, which obviously I'm not exhibiting right now, but um, you know, when you're on the phone with a customer and you're trying to explain something to them, you're like, oh, click on the Apple on the screen. They're like, what are you talking about? What Apple? So you're like, in the lower left section of your screen, you're gonna see a small Apple, or well, actually upper left, sorry, hello. Oh, it's been a while. Or there's a blue face in the bottom left of your screen. Do you see it? Okay, go ahead and click on that. That's Finder. And so like little pieces about how to tailor your communication to be most effective. I can pull mm -hmm. that from it, right? Um, working at uh, Cinnabon or Freshens, you can sit there and talk about juggling competing priorities and um, you know trying to schedule efficiently or to anticipate needs before they're into play. You think about things that can help you and you actually develop traits and characteristics and specific skills that seem really small but are actually really really beneficial in a whole different array of arenas and so i say if you're going to include it on your cv highlight specifically what you think is a skill you learned that actually contributes to what you're doing so whether that's again managing competing priorities that are changing on a regular basis or uh, time management organization or whatever it is it could be really generic but almost every job that i've ever been in actually all of them has taught me something in some way, shape, or form that's going to help me be a better physician, whether it is from communication, organization, prioritization, um, networking, you name it, problem solving, conflict resolution, teamwork, management mm -hmm. styles, hiring and firing people in a job when I was 16, absolutely that's going to come into play with crucial conversations I'm going to have with other physicians, with MAs, with front desk staff, with administrators, with our chief medical officer, whoever it might be. I like how I'm assuming I'm going to be a Probably a uh, large organization. Anyways, gonna maybe so. That's in your future for sure. All right, we'll see. I uh, I had some great physicians back home, and so uh, my goal, I think, uh, has always been to try and get back and train with them and get to work with them because you know there's something special about your family, and when you hire a lot of physicians and you get to spend that time with them, 
It's, it's special. That's really cool. So you have a community of physicians in Arizona? Yes, absolutely. And you would hope to go back there for residency and to work eventually as a physician? That's the plan. Yeah, I, uh, cool. it was actually a really cute send off. Um, I'm really blessed in this that since I work with you know, a chief medical officer and a chief executive officer that have gone through the process of going through med school, when I left, they actually went and bought me my first Atlas Netters. Um, and everybody from my office went through and signed it with some good wishes. So when I left, uh, it was an extra 20 pounds in my carry-on, but it was worth it. And it, it, was, a, it was a very warm and significant send-off. Yeah, it's a really thoughtful gift, too. Some netters. Right. Everyone likes some netters. Thanks, Dr. Bethencourt and Spivey. Okay, on a similar note, um, do you have any advice or thoughts for viewers who may be thinking about switching careers, but they're kind of on the fence? Mm -hmm. They have some inclination to study medicine, but they're mm -hmm. afraid of leaving a, what is a stable career to go back to school at an uh, older age than like the average 22 year old applicant right most of our classmates it's actually funny there's like a group of what like eight of us that are over the age of like 25 and we all kind of hang out together quite a bit everybody gets along with everybody it's not like anyone's segregated but like it's funny because we all gravitated to each other like oh what's your story because we know we're gonna relate but um you have to be sure um, it was the hardest thing for me was not leaving my family as much as I love them. Uh, might might have been leaving my cat. I'm kidding. Actually, I might not be kidding about that. Um, oh. I might not be kidding about that. <laughs> Sorry. That was a good pun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but m the hardest part for me was actually putting in my uh, three week notice at my job. Um, I had four people I wanted to talk to, and it was it was really 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 hard because. Leaving something stable, especially when you are a logical human being and you have a good job with people that you appreciate and you care about, that you love, really. I mean, they're your family. When you're working 65 hours a week sometimes, like those are the people you see more than your family and your friends. And so you have to be sure that this is what you want to do. So I say like pro and con list it. Everybody learns in different ways. Everyone processes differently. But like sit down, write it out. What do you have to gain? What do you have to lose? Why are you doing it? But really, really, really check why you're doing this. Because if you're doing this, especially medicine, for money, uh -uh, don't do it. If you think it's going to be easier, nope, don't do it. If you're doing it for prestige, there are so many other prestigious careers that you can get into so much more easily. And there are so many careers that are way more lucrative than being a physician without going into debt, without having to study as much as we do and go through constant insults about who you are and your worth from not getting secondary applications or not getting interviews or not getting accepted. And the money that you put into every single step of the way, this is a huge investment. I think this applies to a lot of different careers, but for medicine especially, why are you doing it? Because it has to be bigger than things that are superficial. That's it. Just figure out your why. And if your why is big enough and you think that at the end of the day that you're not gonna let this go, that it's always gonna be in the back of your mind, do it. And what's great about this is, especially if you're going to stay in the States, uh, so for us, for coming to Poland, uh, you can apply during the entire year for that year, so we matriculate in August, but you, like, for me, my interview was in June or July, and then I was here in August. It was like a six-week transition. It wasn't long. But if you're in the States, you're submitting your application in May, June for the following August. So it's a long process. You've got to study and take the MCAT. You've got to get everything all submitted. Your primary application takes forever. Mm -hmm. Then your interviews take forever. There's a lot going on. If you're going to do it, you have to commit. You have to set deadlines and you just have to go. But sit down, process it, figure out your why, and then do it. You can always stop. Until you put in your notice, there's no point in not exploring it a little bit. And that was the interview. Thank you. That was perfect. <laughs> There we go. It kind of what really sums up some of like the big messages though. You have to know your why and you you've got to be willing to accept the debt and the questions four years of studying plus three plus years of residency. Yeah, you especially really if you're to trying to go into surgery, call it. Then you're five years of residency for general mm -hmm. surgery and trauma. If you specialize it's more, it's a lot. Self awareness, you've really gotta know yourself and what it is that you want with your life. 100%. And if you're doing this just to get to the end, I think you got to check your intentions again. Because if you're not looking at this as an experience and like as the journey being part of it, you're, you're wasting your time. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the experience here. Because I would like to know a little more about... So we're both first-year medical students. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us a bit about your experience adjusting to medical school and maybe getting to what your typical day or week looks like as a medical student too. 
Absolutely. Um, I don't know what everybody else is like. I mean, we see our classmates all the time. You see social media. So some people are out all the time. They're doing stuff. They're exploring. They're trying new food. They're actually going out. There is nightlife available to you. It's just like being anywhere else. Um, my typical days and weeks, I don't know. Maybe I'm just different. But it takes a lot for me to absorb information and really truly learn it and retain it. So I'm at the library almost every night. Uh, I sit in the silent fishbowl study room where no one's allowed to talk. You can't even bring backpacks in. You just leave them outside. You bring what you need. You sit down with your headphones and you just go. Um, and I try no and get backpacks. no backpacks because they no don't want the zippers. In the fish bowl. No, no backpacks, no food, no open just, containers. Just the fish. Just the fish. Yeah. Just the fish, and their food. No, no food. No, no food, food in there either. No, just brain food. God. You can sneak in little things like that. Oh today. yes, absolutely. This is the big thing. Gotcha. Um, but realistically, I try to get like during the week when we have classes. Sometimes there's times that I don't study. Sometimes there's times you get two hours in and you feel pretty happy about it. But weekends, it's a minimum of like five, six hours minimum. And there's times that I'll be at the library for 10 or 12. Like, I'll get there first thing in the morning. They close at midnight. I know the bells. I know when they're ringing. And I don't want to get the heck out. But all I do is study, I feel like. Um, every now and then when we're celebrating after a big exam, we'll go get food and stuff. Uh, but it's really studying and then working out. I try and get a minimum of three workouts in a week. Whether it's at the gym weightlifting, mm -hmm. which I love doing, cleans, jerks, working on snatches, yes. our form's getting better. This is true. Shami is my personal trainer, often. I We're workout buddies. Yeah. We actually are going to do our first insanity workout today. Thanks, Sean T. Those are still relevant. Round two. <laughs> Just a little bit faster this time. by working out, uh, studying as much as I possibly can. We have class a lot, it varies quite a bit. Some days you only have one or two classes for like two to four hours or something, and then other days we are packed from what, 7.30 in the morning to 7.45 at night with like a 30 minute break, and you're like, when am I supposed to pee? Like, bad. Um, but that's, that's really the life of a medical student, I think if you take it seriously. Huge positive about coming to a different country. All my friends are gone. No one's trying to pressure me to go out. Like I'm not worrying about like balancing plans in a social life and my family. They give me a lot of space. I set really firm boundaries before I came out here saying like, hey, if I don't respond to you, it's not that I don't love you. I just, I can't, I can't balance everything. Um, and so biggest adjustment is weird not going to work. I think that's just the hardest part. I have separation anxiety from my old job, it's weird, but... That's interesting, we're not going to work. Yeah. So, do you feel that you want to do something in addition to medical school? No. No, okay. No, you can't. People who do anything on top of this, I think, are crazy. If, I mean, here's... Hmm. I did my undergraduate, I graduated in 2013. There's some classes I've taken since 2009, so when I applied, general chemistry, bio, all out the window, I had to relearn it all. I don't have anything fresh to pull from. Yeah. So some of the students we're in class with are like, oh, let me tell you about, I always think mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Why is that the thing that comes to mind? I don't know. But they'll be like, oh, let me break down lysosomes and what they do and their structure. And I was like, I don't even remember that word. It rings a bell. And, you know, like, I feel like we have, like, the lower hand of that. So, I don't know. I need a little bit more time to focus. And so I don't think I could do anything else. I don't think I could work. But, like, changing the way that I dress. Not wearing heels every day. Well, okay, now I wear heels every day anyways. Yeah. I get teased for that actually quite a bit. And boots. Yeah. But like, I mean, realistically, I'm dressing like a student-ish, sort of. Yeah. I'm acting like a student, you carry a backpack, like, you, your life is studying, you pretty much never yes. have free time, because you feel too guilty when you're doing something that's not studying. Yeah, th this is very true, I felt this as well. Yeah. So you do have some kind of guilt during your free time that you're like, I should be studying. So like, we talked about this uh, a few days ago. We both play jujitsu. jitsu um, Shami's really good. She actually triangle choked me the first time that we rolled. I was really excited. I might have bragged about it. It's fine. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, but it you caught me off guard, like, um, legit triangle joke. And he's um, a blue belt, so that's impressive. I'm a single stripe white belt. I'm poor. No, it's okay. There's it. only one. The secret's out. The secret's out. I'm okay. keeping it forever. It's a highlight of my life. <laughs> ben, where were we going with this? Um, we jiu both do jujitsu. Yeah, jujitsu. Mm -hmm. So when I'm at jujitsu, um, I've only gone a handful of times since coming to Poland. Because they're 90 minute classes and we feel exactly. really guilty. Yeah, so they're not even. I didn't even work in a shower and like going there and coming home. 
Well, you shower. I don't usually shower after. Um, directly after. I do shower, but not directly after the gym. Oftentimes, like, I'll go between classes, so I run. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit um, it's gross. All I heard is he doesn't shower. Poland is really cold. So the first time that we ever went to the class, I remember we were sitting there and we were so drenched, like our shirts had changed colors. And you just see, like we were in Nogi the first time, mm -hmm. and you see steam coming off of our bodies because the light was coming and we're like, Ugh. <laughs> a lot of sweat. That's epic. Oh, it's gross. Steam coming off, yeah. I think I have a Snapchat of that. You gotta show me. We okay. Snapchat. This is gonna. I'm gonna put this in here. If that's cool, we'll put this. The steam, the sweat in there. Yeah, we'll see we if we can find this. In. He's good at editing. He can do that. Alright, I'm gonna see if I can find it. If I can't, I'm so sorry. We'll put something else, like okay. a video of a cat. So no promises on the on the sweat. If there's no sweat, there's a cat eating broccoli. I mean that's the video right there. Mm-hmm. Still oh, nice. It's really good. I think we should have a toast at some point. Mm -hmm. No one yet, as you're eating, right? To anatomy. To, and parasitology. <laughs> no! Do you have that test tomorrow? I do. Uh -huh. And like I forgot about it until uh, Josh mentioned it. Oh, that's something to adjust to. Being at the whim of a university for changing their schedule constantly, that's tough. Yeah. I'm not used to that. I'm used to people like telling you what to do, where to be, what to have done, and like that's it, end of story. But like we shift things constantly. I think like when we take exams, like our class will vote to change something and they'll move it. And it usually ends up making our lives a little bit worse because then we like pile all mm -hmm. of our exams into one week and it's a little scary. Uh, but there's so much happening concurrently. We have some classes that will be like sped through within a month or two and then boom, you take your final, you're done. And then we have like physiology where we're taking it. We started it when we first got here, like our second week and it's still happening. And we have like one lecture a week or one every two weeks and then randomly a quiz like four weeks after the lecture that was related to it. And, it's, it's sometimes it's tough. It, again, the whole job experience fitting in with this, balancing competing priorities and trying to stay organized. Man. Sorry to popcorn burp there, but this really is cute. very this is very true though about um, the chaotic scheduling, and it is always changing. Always. So I'm wondering, you, maybe you have more experience with American medical schools. Do you think it's similar stateside with the schedules jumping oh, around last minute and? That's one thing, if you're going to an international school, oh, okay, I think you were gonna ask me about this anyways, so we'll just pretend like you were. Sure. Um, I highly recommend it. I would do it all over again if given the opportunity. I love it here. I think there's a lot of life skills that we're all gonna learn together as a result that we wouldn't learn in the States. Now, that being said, and I've said this to everybody who's reached out to me personally about my experience about the school that I go to, uh, we go to, um, and they, they're always like, oh, do you recommend it, should I go? And I'm like, at the end of the day, it's everything you put into it. I think in the States from the friends that I have that are either residents or attendings or are students right now, everything is tailored to step. So you get in and you walk into whatever, histology, and they're telling you everything you need to know about histology for step, to pass step. And so you're studying the entire course and all your internals, I feel like are all kind of lined up towards the exams, the national exams you need to take in order to be a resident in the States. Here, they don't care. You have PhDs who are super knowledgeable and really passionate about what they're learning and like, or what they're teaching and what you're learning. And they're gonna quiz you on nitty gritty tiny details. They don't care if it relates to the exams you need to take to go back to the States. Cause one, not all the students here wanna go back to the States. And two, even if they do, they're focused more on their material than they are on you matching in the States. That's just it. That's the simplest way you can put it. But what that means is if you have the diligence and the work ethic to sit down and study towards step, to use first aid and your other resources, doctors and training boards and beyond, whatever it might be, however you wanna study for them, if you're doing that on your own and you're here, I truly believe that you're actually getting a more broad knowledge base than students in the States because it's not just focused on like what's your destination. It's like, here's everything. And also this extra layer of like what you need for success in that exam. Is that? I'm yeah, I love your perspective on that because I hear a lot of complaints and actually I'm, I'm guilty of this. I complain quite a bit um, about the education style here, <laughs> about the education style here um, because they don't prepare us directly for step exams. But I like your perspective because it's a bit more positive. So you're saying we do get a lot of lectures from PhDs who may or may not be practicing MDs as well, mm -hmm. but their scope of work is a bit broader. Mm -hmm. And the lectures that they give us are broader and focused because they're not tailored just for the step exams. Focused. Yeah, focused. 
towards the step exams. So we've got to, we do have to study an additional amount of time for the step exams on top of our classes and the internal exams. So a bit more than the states. Oh, my dad's trying to FaceTime. I think that's going to wrap the video. Oh, that's right. Pardon me. You can, can keep you can going. answer it if you need to. No, it's okay. You my dad can wait. That. I should have put that on Do Not Disturb. Sorry. Oh, that no, you can totally pause. answer it and put that in the interview. And that would be even better. No. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's actually really funny. I was crying laughing the other day because I was in the silent room. The set silent room where we, you can't bring anything in, not even the backpack. The fishbowl. Let's just call it what it is. The fishbowl. Yep. I'm in there and I have my headphones on and I'm playing music to my phone, like, or from my phone. So, like, a Bluetooth is connected. We're adequately corresponding to all of the rules that they have. Everything is fine. And then hearing properly. And all of a sudden, my dad FaceTimes me and I go to answer thinking it's going to be in my ears like it always does. It connects my calls to them. Not only does it not connect to my headphones, but my dad decides to answer with, Hello, buddy! And the entire room hears it. Oh, <laughs> and I was mortified. So I run out, right? And I, I take off the headphones. I hang up on him. I leave my headphones in the room. I run out. I answer the call. I talk to him. And I tell my friends what's going on. And I go to play them a song on my phone. And it connects back to my headphones. And I was like, So you're telling me the one time I needed to stay connected to my phone? It's not. Oh, it's, anyways, whatever. It's embarrassing. That's pretty epic, though. And funny. Bati, I'm taking... Bati. Bati, okay. It's like daughter. It's like a term of endearment. That's pretty Very cool. cool. I speak yeah. Assyrian. My background... Oh, you're going to get into that too. My background is Assyrian and Polish. Part of my uh, drive for coming to Poland is I was raised oh, okay. around Assyrian family. I had an Assyrian nanny. I spoke Assyrian first. I learned English through the school system. Um, and obviously my family too. But uh, our primary language at home was Assyrian for when I was a little kiddo. Uh, but I didn't know anything about my Polish heritage at all, so I'm super pumped that I came here just to try and learn more about the language and the culture and the people and about anything in Europe in general because I'd never been to Europe before. I didn't want to be so ethnocentric that like only U.S. or only Arizonian standards of care, of communication, of living was all that I knew. Like coming here and not having a car and having a bike and like walking to get my groceries and only getting a couple days at a time because fridges here are smaller. Like little stupid things you would never think about. Like you have to think about how other people communicate, exist, all of that. And uh, that, was, that was huge. How is the coffee, by the way? It's delicious. What is it, a percolator? Yes. Sounds like a dance move. Percolator. I think it is actually. Percolate. Let's get this camera set up. Chemi, you got some moves. Really though. Yes, we got. Oh, we we're talking about adjusting to medical school. We addressed that. Why international yes. medical school? I didn't accept. I didn't get accepted to United States medical schools. I'm not a traditional student. I don't have a great GPA. I had a 3.28, and I was proud of that. I don't know what's happening with my hair. Sorry, it shouldn't be left unattended. Um, I uh, I think I'm going to be an incredible physician one day. I think I absolutely have what it takes. But um, I had an average MCAT score. I had a average GPA, which is below average for medical school because everyone's really competitive. Um, I had some research, but I graduated in 2013. My master's is in business, not in anything science related. And so I think that I was a really risky candidate for United States medical schools and it's competitive and that's it. And um, I took the MCAT a second time and the second time I got like a 308 or something, or whoa, whoa, 508, holla, sorry, that's not even possible. It's not a comparison game, but it, it wasn't good enough for my first round of applications. And when I started my second round and I was applying in the States, I threw Poland into the mix um, and they accepted me quickly. They communicated with me through the entire process. I felt really valued and respected through everything. Uh, I liked everything I saw, it was accredited. Um, I heard good comments from other people who said that it had a good reputation in general. Dr. Hibner from uh, Dignity specifically is Polish, gave me the idea to apply in the first place, spoke highly of the program. It's the best idea ever. Yeah, it was really lifesaver. Is it going? It's going. Yeah. Yeah, we're back on. I keep eating with my... My parents raise me better than this. I don't usually chew with my mouth open. Actually, I usually yell at them for chewing and talking at the same time. Ask them, they'll tell you it. If there's anything you guys want to hear from us, neither of us bite. He's a lot nicer than I am, though. So just reach out and let us know because we both have channels. Uh, he's a little more organized than I am, but like I, we, we only really want to post stuff if it's helpful to you guys. And we don't want to just like flood your feed with like, oh, hey, we wake up in the morning and we have coffee. Let us show you how we make it. <laughs> oh, I have like a video in progress where it's nothing but coffee. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm a bad friend. It's fine. The spam is coming. 
hours a day to study, how do you de-stress from med school? All right, Shami, it's been awesome having you on the channel. You guys can find Shami on her channel at... Oh, hey, okay, I, I need your guys' help. Here's the deal. Literally, all you have to do to find me is type in Shami Benjamin, S-H-A-M-M-Y, last name is Benjamin, like Benjamin Franklin. Um, I have enough subscribers to decide on a URL thing, so help me come up with something clever. Like, I don't know. Someone's like, Shami the surgeon. I was like, ah, that's a little weird. I'm not anything close to that yet, but like, Shami studies medicine. I don't know, something cute, so help. That's a cool one though, Shami studies medicine. It's actually, I haven't thought about that for right now. That's your guys' fault. But Shami is like such a cool name in and of itself. It's like, it doesn't even need anything else, I, I think. But you could add that in Shami studies medicine. That's cool. Shami does medicine. Shami does with medicine? Reducing the medicine. syllables instead of we've got studies, we've got does medicine. Right? Shami shadows medicine. Shami shadows surgeons. E. We did that! Oh, that's. Oh, did you? I think you uploaded a video. I watched it. Never mind. You're like, yeah, a classmate and I went and watched the surgery. And I was like, mm -hmm. that's me. That was I'm the classmate. Yeah, she's e. the classmate. We have a picture of that. I don't know if you want to edit it in, but I have it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to put that picture in here. Put it yeah. right here. So it's 8.30, we still have to hit the gym. We're doing leg workout, mm -hmm. I believe. We're doing an intense plyometric power workout, uh, high intensity interval training, and we're not gonna be able to walk tomorrow. Oh, keep trying Oh, Wi-Fi. Keep trying wi yeah. My phone hates me, it's fine. It's okay. But we're literally not gonna be able to walk tomorrow. It's gonna be great. It is gonna be great. And then we've got to study parasitology. I have the exam tomorrow. He does, and then yeah. we have a huge anatomy exam. In two days time, mm -hmm. we've got a practical in a week, in two weeks, two weeks? I hope it's not that soon. It's like, in the two or three weeks that we have a practical, and then yeah. like a week or two after that, we have an NBME. Mm -hmm. So, when we said you have to balance priorities, we meant it. I, I don't think it matters whether you're here or in the States. What's different is in the States, they have a lot of like online learning modules and like things that you can do to like watch lectures from home. Here, it's a lot of different. <laughs> a lot of stuff is in person, and attendance is mandatory at a lot of lectures. So, just be prepared that you're gonna have to be <laughs> learning in person from teachers a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that sounds silly. I really like it, but uh, I also understand the convenience of learning at your own pace in your home. That is not something that's really typical of international schools that I've seen so far, which, you know, has its pros and cons, but yeah. it means we're in class a lot, so get ready. That's the good part. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for watching and thank you, Shami, as well. Absolutely. Dobranoc. Dobranoc. See you guys in the next video.